The UK was never meant to hold European parliamentary elections again. Its 73 MEP seats should have been divided amongst the other 27 countries and prospective members. But with the six-month Brexit transition being granted, they're now inevitable. Please do not waste this time. Thank you. The impasse, though, means fresh elections have to take place at a cost of just over £100 million. But many in Britain, including the Prime Minister herself, believe them to be a waste of time. I don't believe it's right to be in a situation of holding European parliamentary elections three years on from people having voted to leave the EU. Now an exasperated British public on both the Leave and Remain sides are looking for ways to punish the traditional parties and send a strong message. And these European elections, which shouldn't be taking place at all, will inevitably be a rerun of the referendum. But whilst UKIP was the traditional party of protest against the EU, its new leader has taken the party to the far right. And so, outside of Westminster, a familiar face is taking a fresh approach. I've well, just arrived here in Newton Abbott in the southwest of England for a Brexit party event. This is a new party set up by Nigel Farage, the former UKIP leader, that is gaining a surprising amount of support around the country. Along the way, I spotted only one home with signs for the traditional parties. I sense that you want to fight back. There are hundreds of people here. And the fact is, Nigel Farage, who's on the stage right now, is the only person in British politics who can draw this size of crowd. Nigel, as a spokesperson, frontrunner, you know, he can't beat him. He just can't beat him. Well, I love Nigel. I love his passion, his enthusiasm. Um, and there's people like him we need to set the change of foot. He's going to win. He's going to win by a mile. It's every, we, we, we've been spoken about as though we're all, um, what are we? Extremists. extremists. We're not extremists. We want to, we want to run our own country. In the areas that in 2014 voted UKIP heavily and voted Conservative heavily, uh, we are doing phenomenally well. In the areas that are big Labour areas, and I was in South Wales last night, we're just beginning to make an imprint. But there's a huge confusion out there. Just look at the Labour candidates. I mean, here we are in the West Country, the southwest of England. Lord Adonis is their lead candidate, who said on LBC Radio a few months ago, if you're a Brexiteer, don't vote Labour. So that's the big message that we have to get out there. And if we can succeed with that Labour vote the way we, the way we are with the Conservative vote, then we will get a big win. By our politicians. But Nigel isn't a one-man band. He's paired up with former Conservative Shadow Minister Anne Widdicombe who claims many of her old colleagues have given up on Theresa May. Quite a large number of MPs, councillors, activists are telling me privately they're going to vote for the Brexit party in the Euro elections. And it's tempting to think that everybody's very frustrated and fed up with it, which they are, but they're also very angry. This is matched on the Remain side, but while some have also formed a new political party called Change UK, Others, like Lord Adonis, who served in government for both Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, are sticking with the Labour Party, despite being critical of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership on Brexit. The majority of the public want to remain. Polls show that very clearly now. The majority of members of Parliament want to remain. The problem is that the, in party political terms, there are now four political parties that straddle the Remain cause. And as always happens in politics, they're starting to attack each other. Whereas Farage, as the populist, is out there with a clear message and he's attacking everyone else and making this a system against the people message. What we have got to do is get out in the country far more and start addressing the concerns which led to Brexit in the first place. Turnout at EU elections is historically low in the UK, but this year high numbers are expected to use their vote as a fresh ballot on Brexit. Vincent McAvinney, Euronews, Devon.